Hello there, my friend. How are you? I'm doing well. My name is Daniel, aka The Drum Coach, and this is Drummer Daily. And if you're a drummer, this show is for you. Um, so at first, uh, I want to apologize that I did not put up an episode last week. I normally try to do at least two episodes in a week. And so I, uh, I really messed up. I don't really mess up. I really just uh, let, might have let you down last week. So I apologize for that. And hopefully that won't happen again. Um, But hey, we're back now and uh, we're raring to go. Um, And so today I wanted to uh, share a pet peeve with you. But I I don't ever want to uh, share a complaint about something without making it usable for most of us. So um, this is something that's a pet peeve of mine, but I think it will help uh help you out in your drumming and that and there's there's a broader lesson to be learned from this pet peeve but um for some reason it hit me this weekend um and I'm going to be talking about a specific product um, I'm going to be talking about Big Fat Snare Drum on this show now a couple of disclaimers number 1 uh they are not I don't have a deal with them or anything like that like I'm not like a endorser or anything like that. So um, they're, they're not, I'm not getting compensated in any way to talk about them. Um, and then after you hear what I have to say, specifically in, uh, in this episode, uh, you might think that I also hate that product, which I don't. I actually um, have a couple of their products and love them and use them uh, a good bit. I actually really like them. Um, but just because you like something doesn't mean that you like all uses and applications of a product. And that is what I want to talk about with you today. Um, so it hit me, um, this weekend and I don't know exactly what specific video set me off on this, but you know, there's sometimes there's like things in your life that kind of bother you a little bit, but they don't bother you enough to actually like do anything about on the spot or say anything about or, um, anything like that. It's just, it's just, uh, it bothers you a little bit and then, but it's not bad enough to do anything about it. And it over and over again, that happens. Um, and, and then maybe somebody else finally points it out or does something about it. And you're like, Oh, I'm so relieved. Finally, someone has done something about this with this product or the software or whatever it is you might have in your life. Um, that definitely happens to me a good bit. And a lot of times I, I have these thoughts and I just don't even think to like, like I don't have enough conscious thought about it to like even, you know, articulate it to anybody else. But finally, something this weekend uh, that just happened pushed me over the edge with this. And that is uh, I I see videos obviously of, of, people using uh, these big fat snare drum. And if you don't know what that is, you should look them up. It's awesome. They make all these kind of like, uh, they're these like little flat, like they're almost like an extra drum head, but they don't have the rim and everything. You can just kind of drop their products on top of a drum head and then it will, uh, some of them like kind of really muffle the drum. Some of them kind of a lot, their original product was meant to lower the pitch uh, of a drum and make it sound really fat, like those big, like fat 70s snare sounds, things like that, which is which is what I use it for most of the time. Um, and it's great because you can like throw it on the head for like part of a song or a whole song or, um, you know, in, if you're playing live, especially you can just throw a, a head on, throw this, throw this thing on and change the sound of your drum for one song and then take it off and, and you can do it really quickly. Um, so anyway, um, that's what that is in case you don't know. I'm sure most of you have seen these by now, but, um, we, uh, so I saw a video, a couple of videos this weekend and it hit me my biggest pet peeve with people who play with the big fat snare drum and that this is particular to what's like their original product which they have ones now that have like holes cut in them and all kinds of other things they add like some have like tambourine things in them and stuff so i'm not talking about those i'm talking about like the original product that is uh you know no holes nothing it just you throw it on a drum and it makes it sound low and fat um it's that that i'm talking about so anyway it drives me crazy when guys start playing with those and play ghost notes um, because I'm not sure if you've realized um, if you have one of these products, if you have a, a big fat snare drum, when you put a big fat snare drum on 
your snare, it absolutely does what it says it does. It lowers the pitch and makes it have that fat kind of muffled sound. But it, I don't have like, uh, I don't have the vocabulary. I don't think the right vocabulary to describe it. But basically it kind of, um, it, you lose some of the uh, range of sensitivity on the drum. So what do I mean by that? I mean, when you hit the drum, uh, the, if you have a drum that doesn't have a, a big fat snare drum on it, you just have a snare drum and you're playing and you play really gentle light taps on the drum and then you hit the drum harder and harder and harder, not only does the volume of the the, the drum, the sound coming out of the drum get louder, but the, the tonality, the sound of the drum changes with the dynamic that you're playing with. Um, and when you put a big fat snare drum on a snare drum, the volume changes somewhat when you hit it, but not as much as it normally would. There's kind of like a, a, a floor and a ceiling that gets kind of squeezed in together where there's a there's kind of a max volume and a minimum volume the drum is going to speak at with this thing. And it, and it always has that tonality. The tone doesn't change that much between uh, different dynamic levels. And basically what I'm trying to get at is, is whenever someone plays ghost notes with one of these big fat snare drums on, they stop sounding like ghost notes. They start sounding like literally like you're just hitting a drum every time the same volume level. It almost kind of starts sounding like um, a really cheap electronic kit that doesn't have like a different sound for different volume levels. It's all just one sound played back at different volume levels. So it's like instead of the sound of, a, you know, when you smack the drum really hard, it sounds like someone smacking the drum really hard. And when you hit the drum really softly, it sounds like someone smacking the drum really hard. They just turn the volume down, which is a different thing um, than what it would really sound like. That's kind of what it sounds like when people start playing these ghost notes um, with this big fat snare drum. Now, interestingly, I don't just like hear something and get angry. So I don't want you to mishear what I'm saying. I'm not saying... Uh, oh, you're you're playing it wrong because I don't really believe there's a wrong way to play things. That's not really what I'm saying. Um, I think the thing that gets me about seeing people playing ghost notes with the big fat snare drum is it in most cases you watch the player playing and they are playing these ghost notes. They are playing the instrument as if the big fat snare drum, that sound wasn't there. Um, they're playing as if the, the sound hadn't changed at all. They're playing the same way they always play the drum, which that's a big no-no. Playing the same way all the time is is, is a big no-no because you're not playing with awareness. You don't even know what your playing sounds like. Um, you just are playing what you always play based on how it feels to your to your hands to play it. Um, so uh, my lesson, I guess, out of this today is you need to make sure you are hearing yourself play and understand the sound that's coming out. Um, and if you ever sit down and just play, and, and again, if you were playing ghost notes and you play, like let's say you play a simple, um, you know, st- straight ahead kind of rock beat, you know, just eight notes on the hi-hat, one and three on the kick, two and four on the snare kind of thing, and you always naturally throw a certain ghost notes in there, um, you got to break out of that habit. Um, that's like the number one like alarm bell that rings for me with the drummer. It's going to have a lot of work to do. When I work directly with drummers, um, if they have a habit of, of playing certain things all the time in their playing, that's like the first thing that I zero in on on their playing and start trying to break out and break down and figure out how to push past that and, and, and kind of break some of those mental barriers is when I sit down, I play ghost notes all the time. Okay. You, you, did you notice you did that? All right. Now play this other beat and don't play ghost notes. And you, and sometimes it can be really hard to not play certain things. Um, but that's the difference between having a robot like memory bank of patterns you can play and being a real musician is constant awareness of, what the sound is and that's coming out of your drums and out of your playing, not just what it feels like to do a certain thing repetitively. I hope that makes sense. But again, 
I love the big fat snare drum products. They're not paying me to say this, um, but I'm also not, this episode is not to bash their products at all. It actually is the opposite. Every single one of their products that I've seen and heard uh, when used the way I think they're intended to be used, they're, they're awesome. Um, it's just a matter of adapting your playing to the sound of what you're getting and understanding it. It's kind of like, uh, I've talked a lot before about adapting your playing to the room that you're in and understanding how the drums sound in a room, um, the room that you're in and, and changing what you might play based on that. Um, it's very similar with, with this thing. Uh, you got to know what that sound is coming out of your drum and adapt your playing to that so that people actually can understand what you're playing. I think uh, people, you don't need, obviously, every every person who's not a musician who hears your drumming is not going to intellectually understand what you're playing. That's why you're a musician and they're not. But um, there is a certain level of comfort that someone needs to have with your playing in order to not feel uneasy about it or feel distracted uh, distracted by it. Um, and that's something to work towards is don't let your drumming be a distraction from the music that the whole band's creating, whatever that is, and in whatever situation you're in. There's something deep within most people who just appreciate music, even if they're not musicians, that starts to kind of get off kilter if a drummer is not playing and understanding the sound coming out of uh, his hands and feet. So hopefully that helps you out today. Um, uh, think about this the next time you sit at the drums. What what, are the, what is the actual sound coming out of what I'm playing and how might I need to adapt that, adapt what I'm playing to better suit the sound coming out of my drums. All right, so thanks for joining me today. I'm so glad you could. We will talk again very soon. Thanks for joining me on Drummer Daily. Bye for now.